Hi and welcome to part 7 of the Point Sense Revit tutorial series. In this tutorial we will be specifically looking at creating a reference plane using multiple point selections, creating a reference plane by generating contours, using the plane intersection tools as modeling aids for roof construction and creating a mass roof structure based on a model line wireframe. I'll just open up a Revit file now. Now you can see this is the scan data we've used in the other tutorials in this series. And if I just hide off the scan data, I've actually put some walls into the actual model itself. And um, so we've got a nice shell of a building to work with. I'm just going to turn on the section box and I'm just going to navigate around and isolate out the roof itself. The reason I'm going to do this is so that we can make selections on the roof without accidentally selecting points beneath the slope of the roof um, itself. So if I just zoom in now and navigate to the rear slope first. So in this tutorial we're going to be looking at the work plane tools and the model tools in the point sense ribbon. First of all we're going to use the fit point plane with a number of points tool. So I'm just going to select that and make a couple of picks on this roof now. And just press the escape key. Now what we get is um, obviously this window that appears and you can see the model line that's been created from the from the picks on the roof I've made. I can get rid of those model lines by unticking this box here. Um, we do have a deviation shown and all of the different points and the XYZs um, which have been generated and I can give this reference plane a name uh, main building rear slope and press OK and you can see there's now a reference plane in the slope of that rear roof which I can hide off in the architect's tab if I want to so we're now going to look at using the fit plane with contour command on the front slope of the roof so we'll just zoom in on this now now the first thing we do need to do is auto measure the parameters of the point cloud itself to give us a noise value and a sample width we can do this in the fit plane with contour command you see this auto measure tool here now we just need to make three selections on the roof slope itself what this is going to do is going to take a slice thickness and give us a noise value and an average point distance with which to use this command so I'm just going to click OK here now you can see this has populated these fields so what we can now do is we can change the smoothing slightly um, and to make it match the average point distance and we can change the sample width down a little bit I can then give this reference plane a name so I'm just going to call this one main building um, front slope and just click start and I just need to make one selection on the roof itself and this is going to generate a contour or a plane uh, using those results so it's now generated a, con uh, a contour and we have a 5.3 millimeter um, deviation on our plane if I just hide the point cloud off you can see we've also generated some model lines based on the extents of that plane uh, within the point cloud which we could use if we wanted to however in this instance I'm actually just going to hide off that reference plane and we're going to go and delete these uh, model lines off because we're actually going to use our intersecting uh, planes tool to generate lines which we'll use to build a roof structure. So I'm just going to delete those off for now. So now that we've fitted two very accurate reference planes to our roof slope we're going to look at using our intersect planes command to generate a very accurate wireframe of the roof. So the first one we're going to look at is intersect two planes now we can do this using the reference planes that we've created or named reference planes we can also do it using the plane of a model element or picking a face but we're going to scroll down now and use the main building front slope plane and click OK and for the second plane we're going to choose main building rear slope we're going to click OK again and now you'll see if I just hide the point cloud off what this has done is this has generated a model line at the intersection between these two planes 
So this would be our ridge in this instance. We can just bring the point cloud back in and you can see that's a very accurate position for the for the ridge line of the building. Okay, so that's two planes intersected, but to do this in a more efficient manner, it would be better to use the intersect three planes command. So I'll just delete that line off and activate the intersect three planes command. We'll now do the same thing. We'll use the front slope. For the second plane, we'll use the rear slope. And for the third plane, we are going to use the eaves level, or the main building eaves level that we've generated. So if we do this now, and click OK, what we're going to get is, we're going to get a ridge, but we're also going to get a, a line at the eaves of each side of the building, where the plane intersects with it. OK, so I'm going to run that tool again, and this time I'm going to look at the gables to get the angle of the roof. So we're going to use the front slope again, we're going to use the rear slope, but for the third plane we're going to pick a face and we're going to use the gable end on the left hand side here which is going to generate two contour, two model lines as you can see there and if we run that tool again, intersect three planes we can select the front slope, we can select the rear slope again and we'll pick a face again for this particular plane and we'll use the front face of this gable so now we've generated a very rough uh, wireframe model which we can tidy up to create a nice accurate uh, model line wireframe of the roof slope. The idea being that we can then use this to generate a mass roof which is a very accurate representation of um, the scan data. So I'm just using the um, modify tools here to uh, trim and extend these lines just to close off the um, the corners between each of the line intersections. Uh, what we will get is this roof line generated or this ridge line generated a couple of times because we did r run the same command uh, a few different occasions. Okay so we've trimmed that off and we've now got a nice uh, accurate wireframe model of the roof. Okay, so the next step now is to create a mass roof around this wireframe. If we just turn the point cloud back on and navigate to the rear slope, we will use this as the first mass to be constructed. If we go to the mass and site tab and the in place mass option, we can give this mass a name. We'll call this one uh, rear roof slope. And we use a line command making sure that we have make surface with closed loops ticked and 3D snapping ticked. We will then select the reference plane that we created as the placement plane. And we need to start possibly at the top left or certainly working in a clockwise direction to get this surface to face the correct way. And we will just draw around the wireframe now using the 3D selections. Just tick OK if there's a slight, slight error on, this, on the reference plane. Now you can see I've generated a mass in that plane in the place of the roof. If we just navigate then to the front slope, we can repeat this command. In place mass, we'll call this one main front slope. And again, using the line command, I'll select the main building front slope as a placement plane. And I'll just work around in a clockwise direction starting from the top just try to be a little bit careful to pick the junctions correctly on the on these lines if we just click OK there and finish mass you can see we've now got a mass for each slope these are not yet roofs these are just mass objects so the next thing we need to do is to convert these to actual roofs themselves so if I use the model by face command and just select one of these faces we can then Go and press create roof and using the, a basic survey roof that I've created as a roof type we can add that to the surface so what we might want to just do now is just check the accuracy of this so we can do this using our uh, point sense commands if I bring the point cloud back in and run the calculate tool and I'll just speed this part of the video up to give a result 
you can see the total result that we're getting from this now. So we've got very, very, very small errors on the model. And we're quite happy that this is, uh, this is millimetre tolerances. So moving on now, I just need to finish off the rest of the building. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video and I will just create some reference planes for each of these slopes. So the first thing I'm going to do now is model the ridge line and I'm going to use the intersect three planes command to use the side building front slope and the side building rear slope and I'm going to intersect these with the main building rear slope which is going to give us the uh, angle or the abutment lines where the two roofs actually join. You can see that there now. So all we would need to do now is just trim these off using the modify command and then we can continue to generate more line work. So I'm going to intersect three planes again. This time I'm going to use the side build in front and the side build in rear. And we are actually going to use uh, the face of the wall to actually generate the abutment with the wall in these two planes. So again, I've now got some line work generated. I need to use the modify commands to trim these down. Just this side one now, there we are. So we're starting to build up a bit of a picture of how this roof intersects with uh, the roofs around it. Not every time we use the two front and back planes we get a new ridge line which we need to delete. So now we use the side build in front and the side build in rear. And this time we're going to use the, uh, the actual eaves level. Uh, I just need to move my section box down a little bit because this seems to have disappeared. So if I just navigate around and just drag this section box down. Let's see. There we are. There's those lines that have appeared. So we've now got the eaves lines in as well. Obviously at the back here we do have an abutment with another roof. So we may need to split the rear roof on the side building into two specific pl air planes or two specific areas. Now I'm going to use the main building front and the main building rear and this time we're going to close off the gable on the left hand side here so you can see that there. Again just go back to modify and just close off these this line work and again get rid of that get rid of that duplicated ridge line. Okay, so I'm just going to finish off the line work for this side building roof now and I'm going to fast forward the video to show the final wireframe model. We're then going to run the video at a faster pace to show the modelling of all of these roofs now that all of the commands that we're going to be dealing with have already been explained and we can see the final product at the end.
Now that we've created mass objects from the scan data in the correct planes for these roofs, we can now quickly go around and create roofs in their place with a single click. We can then bring the point cloud back in to have a look at the accuracy of the model.